I cannot tell you how it warms my heart to, I hope I've hugged most of you, but y'all know I'm a hugger. If you haven't hugged me, I'm coming for you. Come for me. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, just a couple of things. Y'all know that the first day is different than an ordinary CBS day. And you may be noticed if you've been here before that things look a little different, right? Um, we made some changes this summer prayerfully, and this is going to work out to be amazing for the children's program to have them all in one place. And we really are blessed to have this uh, beautiful place to come worship and and start our mornings here. So just welcome everybody. And especially you who are new, I want you to especially feel welcomed because I know it can be hard to come to a place where you may not know very many people, but boy, do we want to get to know you. So, um, all right, so welcome, welcome. I'm trying to remember, um, Lisa, do you have, you didn't put my PowerPoint the way you usually have it. <laughs> But that's okay, all right. It's a little sooner, the, usually I can see the next PowerPoint. If you would come fix that, that would be awesome. Um, all right, but I wanted to tell you all a little bit about myself, but since that picture is up, that's my wonderful, loving, godly husband that I am so, so very thankful for. And that was just at a wedding a couple of weeks ago. Our, our kids say, wow, y'all dress up nice. Y'all clean up nice. Y'all clean up nice. So, um, all right. Well, I want to tell you all a little bit about myself. My name's Nisi Whitten. For those that you don't know, I'm your teaching director. And, um, you know, in a minute, I'll show, tell you more about my family. Or no, I'll go ahead and tell you about my family right now. So that's my husband. This is an old picture. Um, my kids are not that young, but just wanted y'all to know we are a family of Aggies. <laughs> Whoop! All right, so that's our sweet little family that has now, over the last few years, exploded. <laughs> Everybody's married, and three out of the four kids have babies. I'm a grandma, and my grandma name is Lala, um, for, for abuela, Lala. All right, and this is my very first granddaughter, Grace, and then my second granddaughter came just a few days after her, and that is Clara. And she, they've both turned one this summer. And then this is Adelina, and she's 10 and a half months old. So that's, that's my family. A little bit about me. Um, in what seems like truly another lifetime ago, I practiced law for 16 years in Dallas. And I became a Christian during that time. Who would have known? And at age 40, y'all, at age 40, I had never opened the Bible. I heard the gospel became a Christian, um, and my friend, where I heard the gospel, she said, you've got to come to CBS, and she, she brought me to CBS, and y'all, that's where, I mean, I love my church, but CBS is where I have grown the most, personally, in the word of God. Um, so I was still practicing law when I was in Bible study, and then I became a core leader and was still practicing law. And then um, I was a core leader for 12 years and actually the prayer chair up there in Dallas. And then I moved to College Station because my husband was getting a lot of speaking engagements here and he teaches at the university now. Um, but I came here knowing literally about one person, and that one person is in here today, but um, I knew nobody and I came to CBS like, I don't know any of you. And y'all know this has become my safe place, my happy place, my joy to come here and be with y'all. And so this starts my fifth year as teaching director. And like I said, we moved here six years ago. For any of you that are new to the area, I know how hard it is um, to move from somewhere and kind of start over. And I told my husband, we are never moving anywhere that does not have a CBS class. So I'm just curious, how many of you are either new to CBS, new to the area, or you know, first time back in a while after being in CBS? Raise your hands. Okay, we have, you know, yay. And, and I will tell you, we're so excited to have you, and the Lord has done great things because our class has been growing every year since COVID. Um, that was a little bit of a, a bummer, right? <laughs> Oh, just a little bit. But anyway, um, 
great things, God is doing great things, and to him all the glory. We have, in addition to our Thursday class, we have a remote Friday class. Um, we now have a remote online class and another remote class that meets outside of College Station. So we are so blessed to just be growing in so many ways. Um, and I love that CBS is for people of all ages, all backgrounds, all denominations, and all levels of Bible knowledge. Y'all, when I started CBS 22 years ago now, y'all, I came to CBS and had never opened the Bible. I mean, except for when they shared the gospel and the person said, look at Romans, and I'm like, okay, where is Romans? I, hadn't, I mean, I did not grow up with Bible studies. I knew literally nothing about the Bible. Um, so, as I said, I've been in CBS 22 years now, and I love that, I, I, that we can all come here at different places in our walk, different places of need, seasons of life, and different levels of Bible knowledge, but really, it's for all of us. As we study Matthew, it doesn't matter who knows more or, or less or where we are in our walk, the Lord meets us. And it's for all of us to grow together. And my prayer is that we grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ. Um, and I want to let y'all know that this morning I got up early. And if you had already registered, which is most of you, I know maybe a few people came today and got registered. But if you were on our rolls, I got up early and prayed for each one of you by name, for the, all the other groups that aren't sitting in here, for all the children and the babies, whatever the Lord put on my heart. And, you know, the ones of you I know, I prayed for each one of you by name. And, you know, the Lord does something when, in prayer. He does something in the spirit realm. So, you know, I already feel connected to you, and I look forward, you know, for those of you I don't know, to get to know you more. All right, so it's obvious to probably even by now that I've drunk the CBS Kool-Aid. <laughs> I, CB, I love CBS, and truly it's an amazing ministry, and it's local and global, which is so cool. And God is working around the world. Um, it's in 113 countries. Let me pull up the statistics so y'all can see a little bit. It's um, in 113 countries. Y'all, and this started, what, 50 years ago out of a little prayer group? I mean, God has done amazing things. Um, and now there's over 1.1 million women and children in the global CBS ministry. Um, and it has classes in person, online, agape, which is for our disabled or needy, um, in prison and beyond. Ethnos, which is doing, having a core group in a, someone's, the English is not their first language, and they have after-school kids. So CBS is just, God is moving through CBS in amazing ways, and it even provides spoken CBS for oral reliant and uh, learners, which I believe is mostly in other countries, and it equips over 73,000 leaders. And just so you know, all your leaders here, this, they are called by God, prayed over, it's a whole process. Um, and none of us are paid. I think the only people that are paid are just a couple people in our headquarters in Colorado. So this is an all uh, called but voluntary ministry. Um, and it's translated already and it keeps growing and you know they're translating into more languages. They're already translated into 88 languages, which is amazing and just so wonderful. Um, you know, it's important for everyone to study in their own heart language. All right, so the, these groups, as you know, they're for anyone who wants to know why is the Bible relevant? How does it, why does it matter to our lives? And as you know, for any of you who have done CBS, they have great application questions and thought questions and um, y'all know the word is active and alive and powerful and our culture so needs people who know the word of God right now, right? Um, all right, so as I already said, it's for people of all ages, backgrounds, denominations. We are blessed to be in this church, and this host church has been so generous to us. So we are thankful to be here, but we are not affiliated with the church or any church, and that's the way CBS is, you know, wherever it operates, they use a space, but this is a non-denominational Bible study, and, you know, we want it to be part of the community, and it is a Bible study for all is how we, what we want, and that's our prayer and hope's desire that more people would come, and even unbelievers come. You know, I, like I said, I just barely, barely became a Christian and was in CBS, so we want those people to come. Um, we're praying for those people to come. I am privileged uh, 
to be serving y'all with my amazing servants team. Um, top left is Jody Josie. Y'all probably know her. She's already, she's the front lines. She meets you, talks to you, answers your questions, you know, makes sure we all have our lesson books. And she does a million other things, y'all. She is amazing. All right, but all my team is amazing. Um, next to her on the top row is Debbie Walker, our new prayer chair, and we're excited to have her. Uh, Jenny Livingston, to her right, is our next gen director. Uh, Brianne Grove is our children director, and Katie Garner is our youth director. On the front row to the left is our wonderful associate teaching director, Chris Williams, our amazing die curtain, our senior leader, and, well, there's me. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, this is our amazing admin team, our administration team. They do so much behind the scenes, y'all. I mean, I can't even tell you how amazing and blessed we are to have them, and I just thank you, thank you, all of you. Um, then we have our core leaders here, and you'll be, you've probably already met your core leaders, and I apparently am just photobombing this uh, picture. <laughs> And, and Chris and Di are not core leaders either, but we all help the core leaders, and Chris and Di are the, the core leader shepherds, so we're, we're all part of one big group. Um, then our truly amazing next-gen program. Y'all, they love your kids. They have been planning a lot of all summer. You know, they're, they're getting everything together, the crafts, the curriculums, the songs, and they... They are amazing, and they are training up the next generation, which is so important, and we need to pray for them because we need to be training up these young ones to be the next bold leaders who will speak before kings, who will be leaders to their families, leaders in their communities. So, um, you know, just wonderful mamas, and just everywhere they go that they be salt and light. These precious children are uh, growing in the word of God. <clears throat> All right. Now, the fun part, I know not everybody has their lesson book because, oh goodness, poor Jody, they couldn't, we knew a lot of people were going to register at the last minute, so we didn't have enough books, but we're, they're getting ordered, but y'all should have lessons for next week, but this is where I want you to get out your lesson book, and we'll go through it just quickly. Um, on the first page, you'll see there's a place for your name and your phone number, email, your core leader. I like to put my name on the front of the book, too, because as you can see, a lot of these will be floating around. So if you misplace it, we want to know how to get a hold of you. Um, if you turn to the next page uh, after that, uh, there's a welcome letter from... Kim Carr, and she's been our executive director for, I think, around 12 years, and she's written a beautiful letter and prayer for y'all to read, um, and just so you'll know, at some point in the future, you'll be meeting our new executive director, and you'll hear more about him, but Kim Carr's written the letter in this book. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys that in the very front of your book, you have some loose things. Um, there's a letter and prayer for me, from me to you. There's a lesson schedule. Feel free to tape that into the inside of your lesson book. And then there's first day takeaways um, so y'all can remember some of the things we say today because I know it's a lot of information. All right, if you're turned to page Roman numeral four, it says community Bible study at the top, you'll find a bunch of QR codes. Those, you can mess around with those, but those will lead you to our, to CBS has an app where you can give, but you can just explore, but don't worry about that for, for you right now. But there are things to look at there that are interesting. All right, so what makes CBS CBS and what I think is so amazing and why CBS works so well is that it gets the word in you because CBS is a, uh, does a five-part method. You know, you do individual study where you, we encourage you to pray over your lesson. You're digging into the word. You're answering questions where they actually make you think. You, you, you've read a passage a lot of times and then they ask you a question and go, oh, I haven't thought about that. So I, I, I love that. So... And there's all kinds of questions, observation, what do you see, interpretation, you know, what does it mean, how does this work, and then you'll come here, and I know everybody's favorite part is the encouraging discussion, and y'all, it is so encouraging, and Chris, Di, and I will um, visit your groups throughout the year, 
and just y'all's wisdom. I learn from y'all, and I love sitting in on the discussions and just hearing what the Spirit has put on your heart. And, and that's what we want you to do is, is, you know, do this, you personally with the Lord, you know, not commentaries and outside sources. Um, and then get together and hear the wonderful thoughts from the others. All right, then there's supposed to be an effective teaching. I pray that that be the case. Chris and I pray that that be the case. Um, and then on the next page, you'll see it talks about the insightful commentary. And y'all, it is insightful. There's, don't miss the commentary because it really wraps it up, gives you more things to think about. And Chris and I try not to put in our teaching, you know, what's already in the commentary. So you're missing out if you skip the commentary. Um, and, and one of the things, I, I remember being very new to CBS and going, okay, I've done my lesson and studied, wow, I've learned a lot. And then I come and I'm like, oh, all these women have amazing answers. And I'm like, I'm just soaking it in. And then the teaching director, I still remember my very first teaching director. And I'm like, oh, wow, there's more. And then you go home and read the commentary and there's still more. Okay, so now I've learned that there's always more to God's word. No matter how many times you've studied Matthew, there is more. And my prayer for y'all is that he show you deep and hidden things um, and, and that you just grow in the more and just grow closer to our Lord and Savior. All right, then all of that is wrapped up in a caring community, which you will find that this place is a caring community. You will love your core groups. You will be, all of you will be prayed over. Um, and it is just really a sweet place to be. Um, all right, then if you turn to the next page, we go to Fisher, and how many of y'all have used Fisher? I'm just curious. Okay, most of y'all, yay. All right, so for those who are new, you will log in, create a password. If you've forgotten your password, you can get it again. But on Fisher, the platform, and your core leader can help you, or Jody, or anyone on Servants Team, if you ever need help with that. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do on Fisher. You can actually answer your questions online and print them out if you like to. You can view up what are the upcoming lessons and events, and you can actually read or listen to the commentary, which is kind of a cool feature, and then the teachings will be posted on Fisher as well. All right, bottom half of the page, our registration, oh wait, here's the, this is important. If you haven't logged into Fisher, y'all can take a screenshot. Y'all go to fisher.communitybiblestudy.org. All right, um, as far as registration and fees, all right, CBS has always, their heart is to be a Bible study available to all. We know there's a registration fee that y'all have paid, and if y'all haven't, you know, or haven't registered again, see Jody Josie, you know, wait here after um, this is finished. Um, and, you know, they're in charge of the curriculum. They do a whole lot of things with your giving, and they have figured out that this year, oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's the app, that, that's going to be one of the ways to give, um, and it will be on the envelopes passed around in your groups, or you can put cash or check. And, I want, and CBS's policy and our heart is that giving is always voluntary, that it be prayerfully led, and that you not feel obligated, you know, that you give out of a willing, cheerful heart as you are able, but it is the giving that sustains CBS. I mean, it's what makes the ministry run, and y'all are usually so generous, and we're so appreciative because it goes toward our children's program, which, y'all, we have the largest children's program in our whole zone that goes from Louisiana to South Texas. We are blessed with many children, and this year, it was an answer to prayer. We have a boys teen group, and that is just a huge praise. So anyway, it goes to all the ministry... Um, all the things the ministry needs. So again, there's going to be an app, and Jody, Josie will do a, an opening in two weeks and tell you more of the details on the how, and we'll show you all that. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. And like I said, it goes uh, toward a lot of things. It goes toward the administrative needs, the next-gen ministry, which is a huge need, because we even pay college workers um, that have been vetted and background checked and they help take care of babies and other things. Um, it goes toward the curriculum development, um, Fisher development, and just the overall CBS ministry. And this year, did I say this already? I'm, I think I did. But this year, it, it costs $215 per adult person. 
Clearly, your registration fee doesn't cover anywhere near that. Um, so, you know, CBS recommends if you can do $5 a week, you can also just give, you know, monthly or however you want to do it. And again, not, it's not obligatory. It is all just prayerfully led as you are able. So Jody will give you all more details about that um, later in a couple of weeks. All right. And next, um, I'm going to invite Chris Williams up here, and she's going to continue going through the, the lesson book with you. And y'all will turn to the next page of the table of contents. Okay, and i got to take this off of me. Put it on you. All right, we'll share See, we need, we need all the help we can get. Hello, is it on? Can y'all hear me? Well, hey, y'all. My name is Chris Williams. Like Anissi said, I am your associate teaching director, and it is a joy and privilege to serve y'all. I'm just going to point out a few extra features in your study books, especially for you new ladies, just so you can get a little comfortable and see what's in here. So go ahead and flip the page to the contents page. It's just a good place to start. You're going to see here that all your lesson titles, the books you're going to be, or the chapters you're going to be studying, and you'll notice next to the um, page number, that there is a nice little space there. And so um, Jody has given you a handout of our lessons and it is a great idea to um, tape those to the front of your book, but it also helps just to write the dates in, like right there next to the page numbers. All right, well, go ahead and flip the page and you will see on page one is lesson one. And this lesson is just commentary only. It's the only lesson that looks like this. And this particular lesson is really just gonna give you a wonderful introduction to our study this year. Okay, so you can kind of see how it flips through. And then beginning with lesson two, just from that week on and forward, all the commentaries will be at the end of the lessons after you do your homework questions. And just like Nisi said, do not miss out on the commentaries. They're amazing. I'm a little bit of a nerd. I look really forward to reading the commentaries. And so on a typical week, it will be after you've done your homework, you've had your lesson discussion time in your core groups, listen to the teaching, that you're gonna find yourself just so excited to kind of go home, read that commentary. And I wanted to point out that they do have some neat features in them. There's a think about segment, as well as some personal, um, let's say personalize the truth section. And these are just great places. They're gonna just encourage you in your own personal walk. And so those little segments are great places to just kind of slow down and just kind of sit with the Lord and have some prayer time. Um, and you'll, you'll be really blessed by those commentaries. Okay, immediately following the commentaries, there is usually the, an end of the chapter review question. And so this is where, this space is just gonna invite you in to kind of how are you gonna apply all the information that you have been sort of reading and absorbing and learning that week. And it just kind of is where you can kind of have a little conversation with the Lord of how you're gonna be taking that scripture and um, applying it to your life. All right, let's just go ahead and flip to lesson two. So this, because this is what a typical week of homework looks like for you. There again, the titles at the top, the chapter of the Bible you're gonna be um, doing in your homework that week. And every lesson begins with just a short introduction paragraph. Some lessons have a memory word of the week. It looks like lesson two actually has one for you. So the first one's going to be Matthew 1, 21. And so for the weeks that do have that, there's going to be a space provided um, at the beginning of each day's homework where you can take a little time and write in that scripture. I don't know about you, but I need all the help I can get with memorizing scripture. So I love um, Psalm 3731, which says the law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. Um, I would also like to encourage y'all, um, I believe Nisi said this, but when you begin your lessons, start your time in prayer. Your personal time doing your lesson is so special. And this is just this time where you want to invite the Holy Spirit in to guide and, and be there to teach you as you spend time in the Word. You know, this is your time to hear from the Lord and just learn directly from Him. 
Now, a couple of requests that we have here at CBS is that um, first, when you are doing your homework, we ask that you do not use outside resources or commentaries when doing your homework questions. Really the heart of that is that may ostracize or make other core group members feel uncomfortable. We want to make sure that um, your group stay united and sometimes when we're, we're kind of looking at outside sources we can kind of bring in maybe some air and we just don't want to um, you know, cause any issues with that. We ask that again, that you don't read your commentary on a typical week until after the teaching. And also know that ladies, if you get stuck on a question, feel free to leave it blank and just move on. No one's gonna be checking your homework. These are your own personal study books. No one's gonna, you know, you're not graded here at all. So also, if you are unable to complete your homework, life happens, we completely understand. Please don't feel like you can't come to CBS that day. Come, enjoy the worship, enjoy listening to your friends in your core group times, come sit in the teaching, and we just ask that you don't participate in your core group discussion time on questions that you haven't had a chance to just study and spend time on on your own. All right, ladies. Um, also, just one thing to point out is uh, community Bible study uses the ESV or English Standard Version when, when documenting scripture. You are welcome to use whatever Bible you enjoy. We just ask that in core group, if you are referencing scripture that happens to be in a different version, just let, your, let the ladies know what version you are referring to. All right, if y'all don't mind switching to page 13, you'll see that there's a day six. So this is a great place to take notes for the teaching. This is also a good visual reminder that uh, this is a great stopping point. This is, this is at the end of when you've completed your five days of homework, you're gonna be coming to class, take your notes, and it's that visual reminder to, hey, don't read ahead of the commentary till after the teaching. Okay, last but certainly not least, in the very back of your book, I believe starting about page 211, there are some extra resources or an appendix back there. The memory verses are gonna be back there on some little, little boxes. You can cut them out kind of and act like little flashcards. You can paste them around your house or I don't know if you have little kids in your carpool line. It's a great way to just um, be reading over some scripture. They've also added an abbreviations chart, which you may find helpful. And if a study refers to a map, the map will also be back there. And it looks like we have one on page 215. So just a couple features in your books. I think that, anything else am I missing? Okay. All right. Well, where is our senior leader, Diane Curtin? I like to affectionately call her Mama Di. Oops. Oh, let me. Senior leader, is that because of the gray hair? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Never. Wisdom. I'm going to share with you some more about our next gen and our youth and our children's program. Uh, you're going to meet Jenny Livingston and Brianne Grove and Katie Garner, which are our next gen director, youth director, and children's director soon in an opening, but you know where they are today. They are all hands on deck welcoming 100 plus children on that end. And if you would just pray for them extra because this is a whole new area for them to all use. They gave us all the upstairs, lady. And this is coming home. If those of you that came us, with us from First Baptist, anybody? Remember that this was where we worshiped first. So anyway, it feels like coming home, but we're glad to have this area. The structure of our program divides your children into nine groups. Our baby CBS are those that are under two years of age. And Sarah Anderson is our nursery supervisor who coordinates the care of these littles, along with supervising our paid college students. And your donations help cover the cost of hiring these trained young women. There is no planned curriculum for our nursery program. Instead, we operate according to the baby's needs and schedules, doing our best, ladies, doing our best, to ensure that this time is enjoyable for them by providing loving care, which includes playing and singing and reading and walks around the building, snacks that are approved by moms, and maybe even a nap. <laughs> our preschool program is for those children ages two through four. 
We call them the monkeys and the kangaroos. <laughs> this year the monkeys have 16 and the kangaroos have 11. That was as of the writing of this. Who knows how many. Their day will include free play, a Bible story, uh, snacks, singing, and crafts. And moms, each week your child will be bringing home a coloring page regarding the Bible study that they covered that day. So look for that. The curriculum covers the entire Bible, beginning with creation and then going through those early church stories. It's divided into six units, and each unit has a theme, which includes a memory verse set to music to help them learn it, as well as a, it was reinforced with a basic shape to help them learn it. There will be a page emailed to you each week called Bringing It Home with ideals for you to reinforce that teaching at home. The next-gen leaders in these classes are Sarah Anderson, Tiffany Barkman, Kate Wilkerson, Angela Haran, and Susan Fox. And all of these women are incredibly gifted in working with children and dedicated to creating a love of God and His Word in those very young hearts. Homeschool, mm, big part of us is school-age children age kindergarten through sixth grade, and they are divided into five classes. The Foxes with Kim Gist, Primary A with Marilyn Bland, Primary B with Michelle Lathers, Juniors A with Lori Cook, excuse me, and Juniors B with Ann Jones. And their, their curriculum mirrors the adult lessons with age-appropriate questions in a workbook covering the same material we study, and so often, the, the moms that are in leadership will tell us some of the questions and show, share with us some of the answers. And um, yeah, sometimes those questions are pretty deep. So look, be, be looking at that way with them that their lesson is covering what you learned as well. Um, Kim, Marilyn, Michelle, Lori, and Ann are truly amazing, and you're going to find this out, very creative teachers. And they share a vocation and a calling for sharing God's Word with young ones. This year, as Nisi said, we added a junior high school, high school boys group, which works under the Next Gen umbrella, okay? Their teacher is Amy Cahill, and there are right now seven boys that are attending, and we are so excited. This is something that's been prayed about for about two or three years, so yes, we're excited. Uh, throughout the year, you're going to be amazed at what these Next Gen and these children can do. They, they share with us songs and ooh, all kinds of good things. Jenny, Brianne, and Katie really wanted me to stress one of the key elements to the success of their Next Gen program, and it is you. As I said at the beginning, you will meet them when they do the opening, and we thrive when you serve as helpers in one of the classes. Listen, once a semester, just one time, one time in the fall, one time in the spring, that's all. Uh, there is something that you will need, all of you will be sent. It's called an electronic protection policy. Jody will send that out to you electronically. You will sign it and send it back to her. It's kept in, let me see if I can say this, this form is stored in Fisher in per perpetuity. Right, Joe? Good. Perpetuity. Now, even if you don't think you're going to be a helper, please sign it anyway because one of these mornings you may wake up and say, we do want to go help with those helping with those kids it's stored it's there we don't have to make sure you ha have signed it any other way cbs please know operates under a consistent set of policies through the ministry intended always to provide a safe environment for our children and this is one of the ways that we accomplish that we encourage your participation in the cbs class day by serving in this way and guess what you're going to be blessed you get to choose which group you want to go to, okay? Me, I end up in the nursery when I can, rocking those babies. Lastly, I'm so excited. We have a young women's core group. I want y'all to stand up. These are our teenage girls. <laughs> Woo! They are so dear to many of our hearts because we have seen them grow up in this program. And now we have a class for them. They operate just like all the other core groups. And their leader, where is she? Nicole Singleton back there. So, yeah. I think you have 20 this year. Is that right? 
19. Okay. Well, that's it. Okay. Thank y'all.